Hello students, welcome to lecture 32 of the online course on photonic crystals, fundamentals and applications. Today's lecture will be on temporal couple mode theory, we will discuss the fundamentals and some analysis. So here is the lecture outline, we will have a brief introduction to the topic, we will discuss about the basics of temporal couple mode theory, then we will take the example of a filter transmission, a waveguide band and then summarize our findings. So, first an overview of this topic. So, why this couple mode theory is interesting and then how this theory works. So, here we will be discussing the concept of couple mode theories which are basically essential for analyzing complex photonic systems including devices such as narrowband filters, waveguides. Okay. So, as you can see these are basically the passive devices which are very important in any photonic integrated circuits. We will also draw parallels between the couple mode theories in photonics and also the time dependent perturbation theory in quantum mechanics. So, when you discuss the fundamentals of temporal couple mode theory in short we will be calling it as uh, TCMT. Okay. There we will first make a abstract formulation. Okay. So, here unlike other methods temporal couple mode theory will be using a abstract formulation rather than a concrete physical model. Okay. So, it will involve expansion okay, in exactly computed eigen modes of idealized systems okay, such as isolated waveguides and cavities. So, basically it will work on abstract models rather than the actual physical system. So, the concept of expansion of Eigen modes as used in temporal couple mode theory is a fundamental approach that helps in understanding and predicting the behavior of complex photonic systems. So, we will also look into the mathematical expansion. So, here in the context of temporal couple mode theory, the expansion in Eigen modes will refer to expressing the Eigen modes that is like the electromagnetic fields within a particular photonic system as a sum of the system's Eigen modes. So, if you want to present it mathematically, this is how it will look like. You can write E R of T, okay. So, electric field is basically function of both position and time and you can write it as summation of a n t e n t. So, here okay, as you can see this is the electric field e n t are basically the Eigen mode field distribution and a n t are basically the time dependent coefficients and here you can see it is basically sum of different Eigen modes. So, this is how basically you are expressing the electric field at any position r and T as an expansion of the system Eigen modes. So, what is the role of the Eigen modes here? Each Eigen mode basically act as a building block. So, by knowing the Eigen modes, you can predict how the system will behave when those modes will get excited. So, this is also crucial for designing devices that rely on specific optical properties, something like transmission peaks or minimal losses. The third important point would be like perturbation and coupling. So, in real world applications, the idealized Eigen modes are perturbed due to their interaction with other components or uh, due to features like bands, splits or some material inconsistencies that you will see in your design. So, temporal couple mode theory specifically looks at how these Eigen modes would couple or interact in the presence of this kind of perturbations and the coupling will alter this uh, coefficients a and t which in turn will basically uh, affect the overall field distribution and hence the behavior of the system will also change. So, all these things you can analyze using the temporal couple mode theory. Now, the question is what are the practical applications as you have seen that this is basically an abstract model other than actual uh, 
direct modeling. So, first thing is that you know we have to understand how TCMT provides numerical results for specific geometrical configurations, okay? How it can take care of those uh, geometry specific information and give you some useful result and how it can help you in analyzing devices, okay? That is where the application of TCMT will come into picture while you are discussing broad range of devices. Next, what is the advantage of using this theory? First thing is the accuracy and the efficiency. As we understand, you know, uh, we can emphasize on the advantages of using TCMT is its efficiency and accuracy of its prediction of the perturbed systems. So, it can do it very accurately and efficiently. So, what are the funda uh, foundational components? So, TCMT basically treats a system as a collection of fundamental components and these components are analyzed by fundamental principles such as conservation of energy okay? and then we will consider the building blocks. So, there can be two types of modes that we all know. One is the localized modes. These are basically formed inside uh, resonant cavities that trap and store energy. The other type of mode is propagating mode. These are the modes in waveguides that can transport energy. So, these two are the building blocks. And now, this theory can also provide a generic framework which is applicable to a broad class of photonic devices and that is why this kind of system is also giving us a universal description. And it focuses on capturing the universal behavior of this devices. Next, how do you do parameterization of the quantitative analysis? The theory is basically parameterized by a limited number of unknowns which are crucial for modeling. First thing is uh, frequencies. So, we will be talking about the natural frequencies at which the resonant modes oscillate and then we will also concern about the decay rates that tells us how quickly the energy in the resonant modes could dissipate. So, these parameters are dependent on the specific geometry of the device and this is where the device specific information gets into the theoretical framework. How do you determine the parameters? This requires separate calculation to accurately determine the values of frequencies and the decay rates and these calculations are usually complex and they depend on the detailed physical properties of the system. So, let us start the example of applying coupled couple mode uh, temporal couple mode theory to a practical example of narrowband filter. So, here you can see the structure of figure 1 uh, is described in uh, temporal couple mode theory as a resonant cavity connected to two single mode waveguides which are leveled as waveguide 1 and waveguide 2. Okay? So, this is basically um, a filter. Okay? So, what is this filter? This is a waveguide cavity uh, waveguide filter in a rod crystal. So, as you can see here in the inset, okay, this, this dark spots are all rods. Okay? So, this is a waveguide, then you have a cavity, then you have a waveguide. Okay? So, this is a waveguide cavity, waveguide kind of uh, filter and this is based on a rod crystal. Okay? And what you see here, this is the transmission spectrum that shows around 100% transmission peak at the cavity resonance frequency which comes out to be omega a by 2 pi c equals 0 0.3803 that is exactly this point. So, they have highlighted this part and actually drawn over here. So, if you only focus on this small section the highlighted part this is how the transmission peak looks like. So, you get a 100 percent peak over here okay? and it has got a quality factor of 410. Okay? So, this is the inset that shows the enlarged peak and the oscillations that you see here at the low um, and the high frequencies they correspond to the propagation which are outside the band gap and the sharp dip at 
omega a by 2 pi c equals uh, 0 0.308 it corresponds to the zero slope guided band edge okay and that is where there is no uh, transmission at all at this particular point so on the right here you can see these are the electric field um, plots of the device okay so this is for the off resonance case so here you are considering omega a by 2 pi c equals 0 0.3765 so this is typically here somewhere so here you can see the transmission is very low so this is the input port this is the output port and practically nothing comes out at the output port but if you see at the resonance that is the on resonance okay so you look at the parameter here omega a by 2 pi c equals 0 0.3803 that is exactly where the peak is and you can see beautifully everything getting transferred to the output port so this is uh, the electric field okay distribution telling you what is happening at off resonance and on resonance case now if this system this is an exact system this has to be modeled using temporal coupled mode theory and this is the abstract diagram of the filter okay that actually helps us establishing this temporal coupled mode theory so this abstract diagram is showing the essential features of the filters from this figure one the first thing here is a single mode input waveguide that is waveguide one okay and it has got the input and output uh, field amplitude which is s1 plus and s1 minus those this is input this is output okay similarly you have the output waveguide that is waveguide two it has got input and output uh, field amplitudes given as s2 plus and s2 minus so the plus ones are the inputs and the minus ones are the uh, outputs okay and then you have a single resonant mode of field amplitude a and uh, frequency omega naught coupled to waveguides one and two and they have lifetimes of tau, tau one and tau two so in this particular case okay tau 1 and tau 2 are equal okay and uh, the sl plus minus are normalized so that sl plus minus whole square is basically representing the power in the waveguide okay and a is basically normalized so that modulus a square is basically giving you the energy in the cavity what is l l is basically 1 or 2 okay so with that we can start analyzing the system slowly so let's first focus on the system dynamics so the resonant cavity has a specific resonant frequency which is denoted by omega naught and what is understood that this cavity decays with lifetime tau 1 and tau 2 into each of the waveguides and because the waveguides are symmetrical you can also take tau 1 and tau 2 to be symmetrical and that is crucial for achieving 100 percent transmission on resonance now there are certain assumptions you need to make before applying this temporal coupled mode theory so it has to you have to assume weak coupling between the cavity and the waveguides which means that the energy leaks slowly from the cavity into the waveguides and the wave weak coupling can be engineered by surrounding the cavity with multiple periods of the photonic crystal to limit the energy escape path so that briefly we have seen okay so now we will go into the basics of temporal coupled mode theory so we'll now derive a set of equations describing the coupling of the cavity to the waveguides in terms of the field amplitude in those components so here is the framework and the assumptions required for the derivation first is weak coupling so this is central to the derivation because it assumes minimal energy transfer between the components we also consider linearity that means the system's response is proportional to the inputs time invariance the materials and the geometry are constant over time conservation of energy that means the total energy in the system remains constant and time reversal invariance that means the processes are symmetric in time so with that we can make the field representation in components the 
first field will be the cavity field which can be denoted by a variable a that determines the electric and magnetic field amplitudes in the cavity so you can the choice is made in such a way that modulus of a square basically gives you the electromagnetic energy stored in the cavity next important field is the waveguide field Okay, these are basically expressed as the sum of the incoming that is SL plus and the outgoing that is SL minus waveguide modes for the waveguides which are leveled as L equals 1 and 2. We have seen that previously. So, the magnitudes which are calculated as modulus SL plus minus whole square, they basically represent the power in those modes. Third important parameter is the decay, decay of the cavity modes. So, we assume exponential uh, decay. So, the cavity modes basically decays exponentially over time with a lifetime of tau due to weak coupling. And uh, if the decay is negligible over one optical period, uh, the behavior approximates a lossless cavity with fixed field patterns proportional to A and the outgoing pointing, pointing flux that is real of E conjugate uh, times H, okay, this is the cross product of the two vectors by 2 will be proportional to modulus A square, okay. So, to remember that to begin with we are considering the cavity mode by itself with no incident power coming from the waveguides. Then comes some important quantitative requirement. First one is the condition for tau, okay. Your tau should be much much uh, larger than 2 pi by omega naught that ensures the mode's lifetime is much longer than one optical period, okay. And then the quality factor Q. So, here you can define the quality factor Q equals omega naught tau by 2 that is much much greater than pi and that indicates minimal energy loss. There can be multiple decay mechanism. So, you have to estimate the net lifetime. So, if the cavity has got two decay mechanism with constants tau 1 and tau 2, the net lifetime can be given as 1 by tau equals 1 over tau 1 plus 1 over tau 2. From that, you can obtain the differential equation for amplitude A. So, in the equation form, you can write it as dA by dt will be equal to minus i omega naught a minus a by tau. So, if you want to solve this, the solution for a t will have this particular form. So, you can write a t equals a naught, it is our minus i omega naught t minus t by tau, where a naught is basically the initial amplitude and e to the power minus i omega naught t minus t by tau this basically describes the oscillatory behavior, okay. So, this is the oscillatory behavior and this part actually tells you about the exponential decay behavior, right. So, now we will include the waveguides, okay. So, when you have the waveguide, so there is an input energy of S L plus that can couple into the cavity, okay. Or it can be reflected into uh, SL minus or both can happen, okay. So, the energy from the cavity must flow into SL minus. So, this is the direction of the energy flow from waveguide from cavity to waveguide, right. So, the most general linear time invariant equations uh, relating all this phenomena is given by this, you know coupling dynamics equation. So, you can write this differential equation for cavity amplitude A as dA by dt equals minus i omega naught A minus A by tau 1 minus A by tau 2 plus alpha 1 S 1 plus alpha 2. So, that is alpha 1 S 1 plus plus alpha 2 S 2 plus, okay. So, so this is equation 1 and if you try to establish the relation for Waveguide modes, so you can write uh, SL minus is basically beta L SL plus plus gamma L A. So, A is the amplitude of the cavity mode, okay. So, here L is again it can be 1 or 2, 
Now, we have seen the two new parameters alpha L and gamma L. So, these are basically the coupling strengths. So, alpha L and gamma L represents the strength of cavity to waveguide coupling okay? and uh, beta L is basically the reflection coefficient at each waveguide. Okay? So, now let us look into the conservation of energy analysis. So, first determining gamma 1 and gamma 2. Okay. So, when tau 2 tends to infinity that is uh, the and you have S1 plus and S2 plus both 0, the cavity decays solely through tau 1. Okay. So, you can understand that there is nothing input. So, these are the inputs from the waveguide to the cavity. They are 0, tau 2 is infinity that means that cavity is solely uh, decaying through this tau 1. So, in that case you can uh, write that equation minus d modulus 8 square dt equals 2 by tau 1 modulus uh, a square and this can be represented as uh, 1 over gamma 1 square modulus okay? and then you have uh, this modulus this uh, a square. So, from this what you can understand if you equate these two, you can find out the relationship between the gamma 1 and tau 1. So, you can see that modulus gamma 1 square is basically 2 by tau 1. So, that way you can obtain gamma 1 to be square root of 2 by tau 1 and similarly you can write gamma 2 will be equal to square root of 2 by tau 2. So, that is important equation number 3 okay? and here we are assuming weak coupling. That means, changes in gamma 1 due to gamma 2 and vice versa are all neglected. So, gamma 1 is only changing because of uh, tau 1 and uh, there is change in gamma 2 only because of tau 2. Okay? Now, we have to determine the constants alpha L and beta L and that can be determined by the time reversal symmetry. So, if you use the time reversal symmetry, um, that can be done by running the original solution backward in time and conjugating. So, we can derive another valid solution that looks like this. Okay? So, here a t will be a, a 0 or a naught e to the power minus i omega t plus t by tau. So, that is basically representing a exponentially growing amplitude. So, here the input fields uh, S L plus can be written as square root of 2 by tau L A okay? that assumes 0 output field that means S L minus equals 0. So, when I am using L I am talking about both 1 and 2 both the waveguides. Okay? So, from that you can derive the reflection coefficient beta L. So, the calculation of beta L can be done using this time reversed condition and it will give you uh, from equation 2, if you go back and see equation 2, yeah, this one, okay, it, it gives you that beta L equals minus 1. And how do you interpret 100 percent reflection? So, when you have tau L going to infinity, that means, you know, the relationship will be something like this between the two input and the output becomes like this. So, S L minus will be equal to minus S L plus that means, whatever is getting incident is basically getting reflected that means, total, re total reflection is taking place. Next, we determine the coupling coefficient alpha L. So, first we consider the special case where you are taking tau 2 to be infinity that means, you just move it away or disconnect your waveguide 2. So, in this case uh, with no input energy, so you are considering that this input and this input both are 0. So, the decay of the cavity mode provides a clear solution. right? So, how do you find out the expression for alpha 1? Okay, so, whenever I am say alpha L, so it, there will be alpha 1 and alpha 2. Okay? So, the when you plug this A t into equation 1, so you have seen equation before. Okay, you can see that it comes out to be alpha 1 square root 2 by tau 1 a will be equal to 2 a by tau 1. 
So, if you simplify this expression, you will get alpha 1 to be square root of 2 by tau 1. So, if you generalize this expression for alpha L, it will be simply alpha L equal to square root of 2 by tau L or you can say this is same as gamma L. So, this is the generic expression for alpha L and gamma L for both the waveguides. So, finally, we have obtained uh, the temporal couple mode equations for the system that is shown in the figure. Okay. So, next we shall consider the two cases where this theory is applied to explain the behavior of some waveguides. So, these are the two important equations. So, we have seen dA by dt is nothing but minus i omega naught a minus sum over L equals 1 to 2 because you are considering both the cases A by tau L plus square root of again L equals 1 to 2 sorry sum of sum over L equals 1 to 2 square root of 2 by tau L SL plus. So, this is how you write the expression for d A by dt that tells you about the time varying amplitude okay? and the relationship between the uh, input and outputs of the waveguides are given as this. So, S L minus will be equal to minus S L plus plus square root of 2 by tau L times A. So, these expressions are valid for any filter satisfying the, the assumptions that we have made. Okay? And the details will matter only in determining the values of omega naught and tau L. So, this approach is uh, generalized to include more than two waveguides, radiative losses and so on. Now, we will see how can we use this uh, theory to find out the filter transmission. So, the previous two equations if you remember the couple mode equation number 4 and 5 from those you can obtain the transmission spectrum of any weakly coupled waveguide cavity waveguide kind of system. Okay? And if you set up the scenario, the transmission spectrum can be defined like this. T of omega will be modulus S2 minus whole square divided by S1 plus whole square. So, this is the input and this is the transmitted. So, this is the filtered output. So, this is what you are bothered about. So, this you have to calculate when there is no input from the right. That means, S2 plus will be 0. Regarding frequency conservation in a linear system, if the input oscillates at frequency omega, then all parts of the system will also oscillate with e to the power minus i omega. That means, it will lead to d a by d t equals minus i omega a. Okay? So, this is fine. Now, let us apply coupled mode equations. So, first adjustment that you make in the expression is that you put S2 plus equals 0. That will help us modify the equations. Now, the equations will look like this minus i omega a equals minus i omega naught a minus a by tau 1 minus a by tau 2 plus uh, the term with S2 plus is gone. Okay? So, you just have square root of 2 by tau 1 S1 plus. So, this becomes your equation 6. From that you can find out the relationship between the reflected beam in the first waveguide that is uh, S1 minus will now be minus S1 plus plus square root of 2 by tau 1 into A and S2 minus that is the final output will be simply square root of 2 by tau 2 into A. So, these are your equation 6, 7, 8 and that tells you the transmission characteristics. Now, if you solve for the transmission spectrum, you relate A to S1 plus. So, from equation 6, so from this equation, you solve for A over S1 plus using the expression okay, and you get A equals square root of 2 by tau 1 S1 plus over omega minus omega naught plus I uh, 1 by tau 1 plus 1 by tau 2. This is pretty simple maths, it is not a complicated one, you just try it on paper and from that you can derive what is T that is the transmittance. Okay? 
So you substitute the solution for A that you have found here into the formula for S2 minus of equation 8. So you put it here, okay. So that will help you to get a relation expression of S2 minus and S1 plus and from that you can have this one that is your transmittance you can simplify and uh, you can get this particular expression okay. So here also you can see that when you know uh, omega equals omega naught this guy blows up and it becomes very very large transmission right this becomes 0 okay and then you can do the maths and find out how it works. So the transmission formula is basically this one. So you can put omega which is a variable okay and when omega equals omega naught you will have the peak transmission. So this is the expression for transmission spectrum that is your equation 9. So it actually gives you a Lorentzian peak with a maximum at omega equals omega naught. So how about the reflection formula from this uh, kind of theory you can also find out what is the reflection or reflectance. So r omega will be simply modulus of s1 minus whole square divided by s1 plus whole square. So only difference is that here you are interested in the power that is coming out of the waveguide 2. Here you are basically interested in the power in the case of reflection. You are interested in the power that is coming back to waveguide 1. So this is how the expressions are related. Okay. So what are the conditions for perfect transmission? As you can see, if I want that uh, t at omega naught to be equals 1 means you want a 100 percent transmittance that means that can occur only when you will have tau 1 equals tau 2 that means you should have equal decay rate into the two waveguides and at omega naught the reflection r omega naught should also be 0 and that should come from the destructive interference between the direct reflection and light that is decaying backwards from the cavity. Those two things should cancel out the reflection so that you get 100 percent transmission. Now how do you represent quality factor? Quality factor the total um, quality factor is Q and the total lifetime here is represented as 1 over tau which is nothing but 1 over tau 1 plus 1 over tau 2 and we have seen that for perfect transmission you want tau 1 and tau 2 to be equal so you can write 2 over tau 2 and hence you can represent q equals omega naught uh, tau by 2 so that actually allows you to write 1 over tau 1 which is also equal to 1 over tau 2 to be omega naught by 4 q right so why you are looking here because it is sometimes useful to write uh, the transmission spectrum in terms of the quality factor in uh, instead of using tau so if you do that in that case your um, equation 9 the transmission uh, formula will change in terms of quality factor and it, it will look like this 1 over 4 q square divided by omega minus omega naught over omega naught whole square plus 1 by 4 q square so that way also you can. So these are same things just that you know tau and q are related and that way the formula also now appears in the in, in terms of q quality factor. Okay? Now if we were to plot that equation 11 that we have seen in the figure like this that is possible by plugging in the omega naught and the q as determined. So it would uh, nearly give you a very indistinguishable from what has been computed here okay so that is how you will see that the theory pretty much works well for temporal couple mode theory predicting the waveguide cavity waveguide kind of filters so what is the main design criteria for narrowband filter the first thing is the system should be you know symmetric waveguide cavity waveguide configuration the waveguides must be single mode so as the cavity and it should be free from other loss mechanisms such as radiation or absorption now what is the role of the photonic crystal here ideal for minimizing losses as it will prohibit the radiative modes beyond its band gap 
thus it will enhance the performance of the system as a narrowband filter. So to summarize we have basically derived the sufficient conditions uh, for us to achieve a narrowband filter with 100% transmission. So that is the goal of using temporal coupled mode theory to develop a narrowband 100% transmission filter based on photonic crystal. Next we will move on to designing a waveguide band. The applicability of temporal coupled mode theory to the photonic crystal filter has been clear now. So similar ideas can help us to understand the situations that seems very different at first. So another such example would be you know how do you depict a sharp 90 degree band okay uh, in our missing rod waveguide. So here you can see that figure 3 here shows a sharp 90 degree band made of missing rows of rods. So that is a right angle band for a waveguide okay and here you can see this has been modeled using that temporal couple mode theory where you have waveguide 1 you have a resonated cavity and then you have waveguide 2 giving you that 90 degree band okay so what are the assumptions here you have considered in like t1 tau 1 equals tau 2 by symmetry and that's 100 uh, percent transmission which is although a low q okay because you want it to be broad okay and you are actually able to achieve it so this is how uh, the theory and the experimental ones overlap and gives you pretty good uh, match right so the dots here the red dots here basically tells you the uh, experimental transmission for a 90 degree band okay and it is basically made in a square lattice where you have used alumina rods which have permittivity of 8.9 and the latest period is basically a 1.27 uh, millimeter. So what are the effects of bending in an ordinary dielectric waveguides? We have discussed this earlier as well. First thing is the reflection and the radiation loss. So bending a dielectric waveguide would result into both reflection of some light and then radiation loss. and the influence of the band sharpness comes from the fact that sharper the band the greater will be the radiation loss and there is a contrast dependence as well. So low contrast optical fibers experience significant radiation losses with band radii less than a few centimeters potentially resulting in a complete a nearly complete radiation loss and this is the reason why when you have low contrast your mode the majority of the mode energy is not confined only in the core if you have a high contrast means the refractive index difference between the core and the cladding is very high in that case the mode is mainly concentrated within the core so only the tails of the mode goes to the uh, cladding so there is they may leak out when you bend they may not satisfy the condition for total energy refraction but if you are using low contrast optical fibers then the modes are significantly going out towards your cladding and in that case when there is a sharp bend modes will simply leak out. So high contrast waveguides on chips they have shown minimal radiation loss even for bands close to the wavelength scale. So what are the advantages of photon crystal waveguides? So these are photon crystal waveguides we have discussed before that they prohibits radiation loss. So the band gap that is inherent to the photon crystal waveguides will help you prevent the radiation loss which is a significant improvement over the ordinary dielectric waveguides and it is also possible to manage and potentially eliminate reflection losses okay so that gives exceptional transmission efficiency so at specific frequencies photonic crystal waveguides can achieve 100 percent transmission and this high efficiency is attainable even when the band radius is smaller than the wavelength of the light passing through so here you can actually see that how photonic crystal waveguide can okay eliminate the reflection losses 
and you can see nothing nothing basically reflects and nothing leaks out so you almost have 100 percent transmission even under this tight bending condition now you can conceptualize the band as a resonant cavity so the band's con corner this part is analogous to a wick that is a low q resonant cavity within the waveguide spectrum so you can write this as waveguide 1 waveguide 2 similar kind of input and output uh, powers okay s1 plus s1 minus s2 plus s2 minus okay so this cavity is also connected to the two waveguides okay the geometry of the band big band does not uh, impact the core analysis derived from the couple mode theory so you you could have had it in different angles as well but right now we just put it in this way to match it with the kind of system you are designing okay so by symmetry the corner resonator must decay at equal uh, rates into both horizontal and the vertical waveguides and there are no additional radiation channel available that means the energy is solely goes into the connected waveguides so what are the resonance and coupling impacts so first of all remember we will be assuming weak coupling that means the system is predicted to exhibit transmission peaks at 100 percent on resonance and the resonance will likely to be broad that is attributed to the low quality factor of this resonant cavity okay so what are the limitations there in uh, couple more theory for band analysis first thing is the band in the waveguide does not constitute a weak coupling to the waveguides so that sometimes contradicts the kind of basic assumptions you made into the couple mode theory because here the coupling has to be strong to continue the light propagation second thing is the cavity that is the band does not trap light for extended periods because the light propagation should continue like this so it should ideally exhibit a very low quality factor the quality factor should be less than 10 okay so in that case you can actually think about the quantitative and qualitative versus quantitative accuracy so we we can understand that while couple more theory may not provide quantitatively accurate results due to these uh, deviations but its qualitative predictions remain valid so we can also think of advanced theoretical modeling so a more precise model is suggested by treating the problem as essentially one dimensional where the light can only uh, move forward or backward so this kind of scenario is basically similar to the quantum mechanical model of scattering from a symmetric uh, one dimensional potential well which are known for exhibiting 100 percent transmission characteristics so based on that you can also do some empirical validation which is shown here so this uh, illustrates the predicted transmission spectrum the theory one in the blue we have also already discussed this using uh, this more accurate one dimensional model okay so that supports the theoretical calculations so what do you understand from here that similar to the filter the high transmission is primarily facilitated by the waveguides single mode nature and the symmetry of the band however unlike the filter the low quality factor in this case is essentially becoming a good thing because it means a high transmission can be achieved over a large bandwidth so let us now summarize the things that we understood so here is the summary of the key concepts so first thing temporal couple mode theory provides a robust framework for understanding and predicting the behavior of photonic systems especially in configurations involving resonant cavities and waveguide bands there are some practical applications that we have seen that the theory has proven particularly valuable in designing and analyzing transmission filters and waveguide bands 
and demonstrating how geometry and coupling could influence the system performance. So, what are the implications and future direction? So, you need to keep this in mind that the theory basically provides qualitative insights. So, further refinement is necessary for quantitative accuracy and future research could enhance the model's precision expanding its uh, applicability into more complex photonic systems. So, to conclude this lecture, we summarize the entire analysis into all these important key points. So, thank you that is all for this lecture. If you have any queries or doubt regarding this lecture, you can always drop an email to me at this uh, particular email address mentioning MOOC and the lecture number on the subject line. Thank you.